Hey everyone, so in this video I will show you how I made the movement in my latest game, Gladiopers. Alright, so let's just jump straight into it. So we got a character here and it's set up with uh, all the body parts uh, as separate objects. Here we got each sprite for each body part and they all got their pivot points um, correctly set as well. And it's going to be important because once we animate the character it's going to rotate properly. So uh, first thing we want to do now is to just go to our character and we're going to add a physics 2D component, actually a rigid body 2D. And we're also going to add a box collider as well as a circle collider. So the character's pivot point is on the ground level. That's also very important. So now we're, we're going to have to adjust the offsets of these ones and the radius, of course. All right. So the box is also going to be have a size of 0.3. Uh, yeah, 0.6. All right. So that looks good. So our colliders are properly set up and now we can go ahead and create a new script. And I'm just going to call this uh, dream on motor. All right, we're going to need a few references here. So first we're going to get our reference to our rigid body 2D. What else do we need? We need a private Boolean. So the first thing we want to do in our start method is to set the rigid body. Uh, what's it called? Uh, center center of mass, right? So we're going to want to set that to vector to zero. And that's going to make it so that the character rotates like this. Okay, so that's the effect that we want. Now I don't think that is a problem here is that it just continues rotating like that and that's not desirable. So I'm just gonna set the angular drag to something like 0 0.5. Mm, all right, so that's better, but it's not perfect. But all of these uh, things are gonna be adjusted eventually anyway. So first of all, we kind of want to get the base things going and then we'll see about tweaking the all the stuff. So we'll also set the collision detection to continuous here. And I usually put the gravity scale to I think two or three, I don't remember exactly. But yeah, it just it's feels a lot better like that. Because otherwise, it's so floaty everything. And now it's a lot uh, faster, it just feels more responsive. Alright, so now let's move on to uh, our animations. We're going to create two animators, one for the torso and one for the legs. The reason I keep them separate is uh, because uh, they're going to move individually. They're going to be animated individually. So it's, I, I guess it's just easier to keep them separated like that. We're going to want to uh, just go into our animation window here and we're going to want to create an animation. And now we can take all of our body parts here. Uh, they're all going to be animated. So we can add them as a keyframe here. All right, so let's just uh, make a very fast idle animation. Not really sure what this is supposed to be some kind of uh, breathing animation. Let me think. Needs to be way slower. Right now we're going to go into our curves and we're going to make it a little bit more smooth. So the head is going that direction. We're going to want to see what happens if it goes up there, then it's continuing. A all right, so it needs to con we need to have some follow through here. Maybe this is too much. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too much, but um, make it a little bit less like, like so. Okay, this is pretty stupid, but for now, it's fine. I'm gonna do the basically the same thing with uh, all of our body parts. Alright, so that looks good. The torso is kind of like... <laughs> mm -hmm. 
We need some more uh, movement in the head to follow the movement of the torso here. Looks like a zombie, but <laughs> right here is the final animation. It's, it's, it's pretty horrible, but uh, for now it will do. We're just going to use it to demonstrate the um, the physics that we're going to create. But first we'll make the legs, of course. They're going to be in their idle position, like so. About 10 frames later, they're going to look like something like this. Let me think, How do you? how does a person jump? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it like this for now, then we'll see once the physics are, is connected and everything is working. We'll see if the animation matches the movement or if we have to tweak it later. But yeah, for now that will be fine. Alright, so in our legs animate or object, we're gonna have to make some something that triggers the jump animation. So we're gonna add a condition, a trigger, and we'll call it uh, J as in jump. All right, so the actual transition into the jump is gonna be zero. We're just gonna start jumping. Now we can uh, go into our script here and we can unhide these two so we get the reference for them. We're gonna create some functions now and it's probably gonna have to take a vector two. In the future, it's probably I'm, I'm probably going to edit this and make it a little bit more complex. But uh, right now, we're just going to make it super simple that if you tap on the right side of the screen, then you're going to jump um, to the right. And if you tap on the left side of the screen, you're going to jump to the left. So for this, we need a vec... No, we just need an integer, I guess, uh, called the direction. We're going to create a, a, a vector to here called jump force and it's going to be equal to an another thing called jump force that we're going to create up here i'm guessing like 500 i guess 100 this could be completely wrong jump force x we're going to multiply that with our direction and then we're going to add the force to our rigid body so hopefully this will all work and just to try this out very quickly, I'm gonna uh, add a, an if statement here, if input uh, get key down key code k, then we're gonna jump in the right direction, else if key code is s, we're gonna jump in the left direction. I also forgot to call the legs animation set trigger uh, what, what do we call it j all right it obviously doesn't go anywhere after the animation has been triggered so we need to make it return here this one should not have an exit time or should it no it shouldn't i guess <laughs> this is horrible so our jump force needs to be something else 200 maybe is better and we need to jump higher, so let's set this to 300. Okay, that's much better. So that's that's basically it. We did it. The angular drag needs to be increased as well. Let's set it to 1. Oh shit. Where did you go? Now the next step is to actually check that we are touching the ground. Otherwise, we shouldn't be able to jump, obviously. Uh, let's do it like this, that we're just going to check if grounded, then we can jump. And we're going to make a new function here, returns a boolean that is called is grounded. Physics 2D overlap circle, that's it. Our point's going to be the transform position our feet basically and the radius let's just set it to point uh, 0.3 maybe if that's true then we return true or we can just simplify this whole thing and do it like this now in our update method we're gonna i guess we could just do this we just set the grounded to is grounded i completely forgot about this part but we need to make a new private uh, layer mask we're gonna serialize it And then down here in our function, we're going to pass our, what was it called? Jumping mask. 
yeah, we're just gonna make in some new layers here. So this is gonna be player and ground. That's all we need for now. In our jumping mask, we're gonna set it to ground. The camera is gonna render everything except for the UI. There we go. Well, okay, uh, so I can clearly see that we need to adjust the angular drag. Set it to three, linear drag, 0.5. I don't really like this leg animation. Let's fix the curves, make them smooth here. All right, so let's adjust the jump force. Shouldn't be jumping that high in the air. So maybe 200. All right, so fast forward a bit and this is uh, what I've done so far on this script. And I think I'm gonna be satisfied with this for now. Surely there are lots of more things to fix and tweak, but these are just the very basics. So in our update function, we're checking if we are currently grounded, but we are not actually grounded, then uh, we're gonna call a function called airborne. And the opposite uh, happening means that we're gonna call a function called landed. And uh, here, we I added a jump cooldown timer. Basically what it does is it just um, makes sure that you can't jump uh, all the time. So if for some reason our character will be touching the ground um, two consecutive frames or something like that, then uh, we're not going to jump two times in a row. Once that this timer is done, though, if we're still jumping, so if we're still holding down our keys, then we're going to call the jump function. So in our landed function, we're just telling the player that he's grounded. And if same thing here, if he's jumping, uh, then uh, we're gonna call the jump function. And here we're just telling the player that it's not grounded anymore. And uh, basically what we're doing here is um, before we call the add force function and add force to our rigid body, we're just gonna set it so that it multiplies with 0.2. And that just makes it so that it's not gonna uh, build up momentum and, and start flying basically. Because we, we're slowing him down and then he starts jumping again. And here's where we set our jump cooldown to 0.2 seconds. If our jump cooldown is above zero, it means that we have just initiated a jump and therefore we're gonna return a false value to the grounded boolean. Yeah, this is more or less everything. Everything that is added onto this is just uh, details basically. Now we wanna go into our script and we wanna create a an input that we can actually use to control our character with the screen of the cell phone. For now, we're just gonna put the script on the character as well. So for this, we're gonna need a private uh, touch. We're also gonna need a private raycast hit 2D. Now, what else? Um, another thing we're gonna need is a private integer that is gonna be called jump ID. Now here we're gonna want to create a for loop. All right, so what we're doing here is uh, if the current touch just began this frame, then we're gonna want to see uh, where on the screen it is. For now, we're gonna do it as simple as possible. So what what this means is we're touching the left part of the screen. We're gonna set our jump ID to be equal to the current touch's finger ID. It's just gonna be a start jump joystick and a stop jump joystick. So if the jump ID is equal to our touch finger ID, then we're gonna stop our jump joystick. So when we're stopping it, then we're just gonna set our jump ID to be equal to minus one. And in here, we're gonna call our actual functions from our motor probably gonna want to change. Uh, we're gonna have to create our a new function here called start jumping. Another one called stop jumping. Let's make it so that we get an integer here and just call this direction. If we're on the right side of the screen, then we're gonna start jump joystick 
towards the right, otherwise towards the left. Okay, we can start jumping there. We're gonna take an integer that's called direction, and we're gonna jump direction. Toggle jumping, true. And here we're just gonna toggle jumping off. Now we should be able to control our character with this script as well as our keyboard. Nothing happens because we are, of course, uh, we need to make sure that the jump ID is actually minus one. Oh yeah, we could do it like this. Just it's less than zero. That's probably what I wanted to do at first when I did it more than zero, I probably, yeah. Okay, so I can jump. And I think that's uh, that's kind of the only thing I want to do today. So if you're interested in future videos, I might uh, expand upon this uh, script and this uh, character controller to kind of like make something that is uh, similar to what I did in Glider Hoppers. If you're interested in that, then let me know that you want more videos. Otherwise, uh, I'll probably see you another time. So thanks for watching and bye bye.